Hi guys, today we're going to talk about uh, surface area and volume of spheres. Um, so let's make sure we define a few terms, a sphere set of all points in space. So this is different. Um, when we talk about a circle, we talk about the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a given point. But now we're talking about the set of all points in space. And the radius is a segment with one end point at the center and the other end point on the sphere itself. Um, <clears throat> of course, we also talk about the we talk about the length also as the radius as well, and a diameter is the segment passing through the center with endpoints on the sphere. All right. Um, in general, you know that a sphere just kind of looks like a, a a rubber ball in a sense. Okay. When a plane and a sphere intersect in more than one point, then the intersection is a circle. So you can slice through a sphere in a lot of different ways, but it's always going to be a circle. And if the center of the circle is also the center of the sphere, then that circle is called a great circle. And that great circle then divides, um, and the circumference of the great circle is the circumference of the sphere. And the great circle divides the sphere into two hemispheres. So when you cut with this particular plane right here um, through the center of your sphere with a plane, when you slice through the center, then, then that is um, your circle in there is called a great circle. Okay, And that's going to split your sphere into two. Uh, hemispheres, half circles, half spheres, excuse me, okay? Like the top of a silo a little bit sometimes. So um, there's two formulas that we need to be well aware of. We need to know the surface area. Notice that um, in the case of a sphere, we don't have a lateral area. For a sphere, you have one smooth, continuous surface all the way around. So the surface area of a sphere is given by 4 pi r squared. I know that I'm not showing you um, the, the theorems or the proof of where these formulas come from, uh, but it's just something that's not in 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 the time constraints of what we have to work with right now. But if you are interested, I'd be happy to discuss that with you in class. Uh, surface area is 4 pi r squared. Remember that area is still measured in square units. And the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Notice in particular that this is third power right here, which actually is a little bit significant, okay? Uh, especially when you're trying to figure out what that radius is, maybe when you know the volume, all right? So remember that R in both of these just represents that length of the radius right there, okay? So let's apply these in a few different circumstances. We're gonna find the surface area of the sphere uh, that has actually a diameter of eight meters. So surface area is four, pi r squared. We were asked to leave the answer in terms of pi. Remember that means no approximating, right? No approximating. That's a big deal. So 4 pi times, and if the diameter is 8 meters, that must mean that the radius r is 4 meters. So we have 4 squared. And 4 squared is 16, and 16 times 4 is 64, so your surface area is 64 pi meters squared. Remember that area is measured in square units. And that's our answer in terms of pi. That's the most basic form of what you might use. Now it's going to get a little more complicated, okay? So let's talk about an application here. Earth's equator is about 24 1,902 miles long, and we want to approximate the surface area of the Earth, right? So we know that if we're going to approximate the surface area of the Earth using 4 pi r squared, then we're going to need to know what the value of that radius is, right? That's an unknown quantity right now. What we do know is that the equator is about 24,902 miles. So what really does that represent, right? It, obviously, the Earth is not a perfect sphere, so we're just kind of approximating here a little bit, but the equator would really represent the circumference, right? Circumference of the great circle because the equator would split the Earth into two hemispheres. So if that circumference is 24,902 miles long, that should be how we could figure out what the radius is. Remember, because the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, and if we know the circumference is 24,902 miles, 
then we should be able to kind of approximate the radius a little bit. So let's do that as best we can. We're going to go ahead and we're going to divide by 2 pi on both sides of the equation. And r is equal to, and rather in this case, actually rather than um, rather than uh, typing it into my calculator and approximating, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. What I'm going to do right now is just reduce this to with a 24902, and that's going to be 1, 2, 4, 5, 1, and that'll look like this. That's now going to be 12,451 divided by pi, and you may want to double check my math on that and make sure that I didn't make any mistakes because that's all too common, but I got 12,451 divided by pi, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Now, why am I going to leave it like that? Primarily, I'm going to leave it like that because whatever I'm doing to approximate, I really don't want to approximate until the very end of a problem as much as possible. And this looks like something I can probably kind of work with. It is going to be large numbers, but that's okay. We can handle large numbers because we have a calculator. So we're going to find the surface area, which was 4 pi, and now we're going to plug in that value of r. So here's where I'm going to put 12,451 divided by pi. And don't forget that we're talking about radius squared. So now it's going to look like this. I've got 4 pi, and I definitely, definitely don't want to square 12,451 by hand, but I'm going to square it on my calculator, and I'm going to get 15502740101. So that would be 155 million. 27,401, and that's divided by pi squared, right? Okay, so here's what's going to happen now. I'm going to go ahead and cancel a pi. This 4 pi is kind of like over 1. I don't know if you remember that, but uh, if you make a fraction out of any integer or whole number um, or, or expression number, then you would put it over 1. And then I'm going to cancel this pi and this pi squared. That leaves me with a pi in the denominator. And then I'm going to multiply the 155,027,401 times 4. And now I'm going to divide by pi. And we get the surface area of the Earth to be approximately 197387017.5. We're going to approximate, obviously, a little bit differently. But that's about 200 million, almost. 197387018. Right? So you might say the surface area of Earth is approximately, and if you really want to, if you don't want to be quite as precise, then I guess you could round up to about 200 million, but I'll leave it like this, 197,387,018 square miles. And I would check that number if I were you. Just Google, like, what's the approximate surface area of Earth? Um, I, I believe that this is pretty close. I'm not positive, but I think it's relatively close. Um, but we'll I'll double check that myself as well later. You could let me know. Okay. Let's try something different. Now we're going to find the volume. We're not going to find the volume of a sphere. So our formula for volume is 4 thirds pi r, and the main difference here is that this r is being cubed, right? We are now cubing the value of r, we're not squaring it, so we've got 4 thirds pi times 6 cubed. It does say to leave in terms of pi, so no approximating here, right? So we've got 4 thirds pi, 6 to the third power is 216, and you know I don't like to use my calculator too much, only when I have to. And 3 goes into 216, 72 times. 3 goes into 21, 7, and 3 goes into 6, 2, right? Right, and then we're going to multiply 72 times 4, and we get 288 pi meters cubed, cubic meters, right, as an exact value. So that's not too bad. Let's try something a little bit different. The volume of a sphere is 
26,244 pi cubic meters. What's the surface area of the sphere? Ah, okay, so this is a little bit different. Let's think about what we're looking for. We want to know what's the surface area. The surface area is unknown. The volume is known. So the volume we have, and that's something that we have to work with. So if we think about the formula for volume, volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And we are looking for surface area, and surface area is 4 pi r squared. So what's the problem here? We're not told what r is. We don't know. If we don't know what r is, then we can't figure out what that surface area is. But since we're told that the volume is 26,244 pi, we're going to substitute that value in for v, and then we're going to solve this equation and figure out what r is. Because even though pi looks like a variable to you pretty much, it's not. Remember that pi always represents a number. So now we're going to start getting rid of everything. And we can do this piece by piece. That's totally up to you. You should be able to do it um, all at once if you wish. I'm going to start just by getting rid of that fraction, 4 thirds, which means I'm going to have to multiply it by the reciprocal, right? So I'm going to cancel these 4s and these 3s. And I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal three-fourths on each side. So now I'm going to do 26,244 divided by 4. So I've got, I'm canceling that with 4 right here. And I got 6,561 pi, which I'm now going to multiply by 3. Of course, you could do this all at once and not have to write quite all of that down. And so now I've got 19, uh, excuse me, 19,683 pi equals pi r cubed. Now we know the next easiest step is going to be let's divide by the number pi to make that easy to cancel. And now we have 19,683 equals r cubed. So some of you may not be really familiar with how to take the cube root of a number on your calculator, not the square root, but the cube root. You know that when it's r squared, you take the square root of both sides, but cube root is something that you don't study as much until you're in Algebra 2. So we're going to take the cube root of 19,683, and on your TI30X2 calculator, the keystrokes are going to be second, excuse me, the first thing that you're going to type in is the three. You need to tell the calculator what route you want it to take. So the first thing you're going to press is three, and then you're going to press second, and then you're going to press this little caret key. That we call that a caret. So then you're going to type in the number that you want to take the cube root of. So I'm going to type in 19,683 at this point, right? so that we can say the cube root of 19,683 is 27. Got it? So now we know that r equals 27. This is our kind of little sidebar about how you're going to take the cube root on your calculator. When you're taking the cube root, you're looking for what number would I multiply by itself three times to get that value of 19,683, right? That's kind of what you're trying to do on that end. Um, but generally speaking, on your TI-30X2, and, and what you're looking for in a sense right here, what you're looking for to kind of give you a heads up, the reason for pressing the second is, uh, and then the caret key, is that above this caret key, it says the X root of something, which means this 3 is telling you that you want to take the cube root. If you typed in a 4, you'd be looking to take the 4th root or a 5, the 5th root or something like that. So um, you can take different roots even on your scientific calculator, and you don't have to have a, a graphing calculator to do that. So I found the value of r to be 27, and now we're ready to find the total surface area. 27 squared is 729. And 4 times 729 is 2,916 pi. And it didn't say to leave it or approximate it. So I'm just going to leave it as an exact value. And that should be in meters squared, square meters right there. OK? All right, last one. This one gets kind of tricky and complicated. But here we go. I know you can manage it just fine. 
Okay. So I've got three tennis balls, and they each have a radius of R. You don't know what that radius is, and they fit snugly into a cylindrical can. So here's what I mean by they fit snugly. It means that each of those three tennis balls is tangent to each other. Well, excuse me, the, the middle one is tangent to the bottom, the one underneath, and the one on top, and the one on top is tangent only to the one in the middle. But it's also touching or tangent to the sides or the, the lateral surface, the interior lateral surface of the tennis ball can, of the cylindrical can, okay? So they're, they're all fitting very snugly. There's, there's not wiggling around. It's not shaking back and forth and stuff like that. And also when you put the lid on that tennis ball can, it's gonna touch the top of that tennis ball as well, okay? All right, so let's talk about what we're looking for. We want the ratio of the volume of the tennis balls to the volume of the cylindrical can. So notice when we say the volume of the tennis balls to the volume of the cylindrical can, that means that we're gonna put that in order. So volume of three tennis balls over the volume of the cil cylinder can. I know it's a cylindrical can, but I'm just gonna say cylinder, okay? All right, so let's figure out how we're gonna do that because we don't really, we're not really looking to find a volume, we just want the ratio. Remember, a ratio is a comparison, comparison of two numbers in the form of a fraction. Okay, so that's really what we're talking about when we talk about our ratio. All right, so let's get down to work here and let's talk about our radius a little bit. So we know the radius of each of these tennis balls is R. And then we know our formula for volume of a sphere, the tennis ball is a sphere, is 4 thirds pi R cubed. But we have three tennis balls, so we better multiply that by three. Okay, so already we have something that we can do right away. And then what's the volume of a cylinder? The volume of a cylinder, remember, is the area of the circular base times how tall the cylinder is. Okay, so, so far we're okay, except we got a problem here. Number one, we don't know what the radius is. Number two, we have two different variables in our ratio. We have an H. We don't really want to have an H. It'd be okay if we just had R, because we might be able to cancel some R's, but we can't have that H. So let's see if we can represent, how can we represent H in terms of R? That's kind of a big deal, right? Because we want to talk about the height of the cylinder, but we don't want to use the variable h because then we might not actually be able to get an accurate representation of that ratio, okay? So let's think about that for just a minute. If the radius of each tennis ball is r, then that means that going up here is r, but also going this direction is r. So what's the diameter of each of those spherical each of the spherical tennis balls? That diameter is 2r. Well, that one's 2r. This one's also 2R. These are all the same size. And this one is also 2R, right? Okay, fair enough. Well, then what is the height of our cylinder? Then the height is equal to 3 times 2R because we have three of those all being added together. So the height is 6R. There we go. Now we've got the height in terms of the radius and we can use that in our formula. So let's get back to work over here on the left. We can cancel this three with this three and we'd be left with four pi r cubed over pi r squared. Now let's put in what we found for h. What did we find for h? We got six r, six r goes right there. All right, and then let's get down to work simplifying this as much as possible. So we've got four pi r cubed divided by six pi r cubed again. Remember that's r to the first times r squared gives us r cubed. And so that's wonderful news. We can cancel out all of the r cubes and the pi's and we can reduce four six by dividing top and bottom by three and the ratio of the volumes is equal to two thirds and you're done. That worked out lovely. All right. Have a great day.